Jeff Hardy is showing why he's a main event talent, while Matt Hardy is showing why he isn't. So in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between Matt and Jeff as of June 2020. So things could change within the next week. I would give the exact date, but I don't know when I'm going to put this video up. <laughs> so I'm not going to pigeonhole myself. But <clears throat> I think that if you listen, you'll be able to understand when this video is being recorded. So let's talk about Jeff first. So Jeff has always gotten over just by being Jeff. He's colorful. He's dynamic as a performer. He's a daredevil. He takes advantage of his lack of size by um, size and strength by taking risks. So, you know, he's always been, you know, they call him the daredevil. You know, he's the charismatic enigma or whatever the hell. I don't know what that means, you know, but he always had an internal charisma an eternal um, light that when people like Jeff Hardy, when they see him, he's the eternal baby face. He's never been a heel in WWE. As far as that, well, I think he was a heel during the days where the Hardy Boys were heels and they were, you know, uh, cornered by Michael Hayes. I think that was the only time Jeff Hardy was ever a heel in the WWE. He's just been that colorful baby face that everyone likes, everyone is attracted to, everyone is, um, you know, they, they, they love watching him perform. He's always been so sort of quiet. He kept to himself, you know, dutiful. But, well, not exactly dutiful because of his, his history, but he's always kind of been uh, a stalwart baby face that everybody's rooting for him. Everybody wants to see him succeed, and that's just based off Jeff being Jeff. Recently, however, we started seeing Jeff Hardy um, speak a little bit more. He's now being a representative of something deeper than Jeff Hardy. Being older in age, he's not going to take as many risks as he used to obviously. Um, so they're accentuating a different part of the Jeff Hardy character, which is actually bringing more of the Jeff Hardy, the man in. Um, this is something that, you know, he has tried to do before. And um, yes, Jeff is very creative as a creative person, but he has always had more success being Jeff Hardy and just bringing in more elements of Jeff Hardy than he has been being a creative over the top gimmick. And so we bring ourselves to this uh, storyline with Sheamus, where Jeff Hardy, well, most recently on SmackDown, they did the uh, drug test segment where Jeff Hardy pisses like six gallons of <laughs> piss, apparently, without without dribbling a drip, by the way, um, into a, a jar. And then he threw it in Sheamus's face. And Sheamus, of course, sold it like a like a genius. But the important thing here is this is Jeff Hardy saying, hey, I'm going to be a representative of people who have these problems and these problems that I've suffered with since I was a kid. And, you know, this is part of the Jeff Hardy uh, experience. You know, he's always been this way. He's always kind of been, but instead of being a loose cannon that you can't trust, he is sort of starting to say, I'm, I'm an honest man. I'm upright. I can, I'm not that kid anymore. that couldn't be trusted. That stumbled into TNA um, drunk or high on pills or whatever the case may be. I'm not that kid anymore. And that's for us as the fans to recognize because Jeff Hardy literally grew up in front of our eyes. So we can say like, okay, yeah, Jeff has changed. And now the character of Jeff Hardy is taking on and verbalizing that change. And other people are, you know, being forced to deal with the new Jeff Hardy that is more focused and more serious and is now not hindered by his former demons. Now, so how good can he really be? You know, what's his ceiling really now that he is, you know, unencumbered by uh, drugs and alcohol? Now, let's flip over to Matt. So Matt um, joined AEW in, I think, March or April of 2020. And it's now, currently, he is... Uh, doing four different characters at once. He's doing uh, Broken Matt Hardy. Um, I think he's also doing Damascus. He's also doing Matt Hardy version one. And now he's also currently Private Party's uh, Michael Hayes, which is essentially their tag team mentor. And uh, this is very ironic. The schizophrenic nature of the Matt Hardy AEW run so far it's proof that Matt Hardy doesn't really know who Matt Hardy is. 
and that Matt Hardy has never really been that interesting by himself. And I know that that sounds kind of harsh, but think about it. I mean, what when really has Matt Hardy been a main event level talent just by being Matt Hardy? It, it never really happened. He's always needed smoke and mirrors. He's always needed a bunch of gimmicks. And he got that when he came to AEW. He, you know, they did the the uh, heavily edited teleportation scene, you know, the stuff with the drones, you know, the, all that stuff. And it's, it's interesting for a while, but how interesting is it really? You know, the different voices and the different costumes and yes, it's creative, but just because it's creative doesn't mean that it's, um, it, that it makes sense or that it's good. Part of what everyone liked about Broken Matt Hardy is that it, it peeled back that while it was a silly gimmick, it actually involved Matt being Matt to some degree and so much that you got to see Matt's family actually participate. You know, what made Broken Matt Hardy work was Senior Benjamin and King Maxwell and uh, Brother Nero and everything that, that went with it. That made that work in TNA. He didn't really have that in the WWE. He didn't have, he doesn't have it in AEW either. And it was just Matt playing a character and, some people have said that it's like community theater. And um, I don't I don't know if I want to say <laughs> I don't know if I want to be that that brutal with it, but it definitely seems like a pro wrestler playing a gimmick. Now, what makes it a pro wrestler playing a gimmick is that it comes out of nowhere. Like Broken Matt Hardy, when it initially happened, makes sense because he was incredibly frustrated and something happens to you and then that flips your personality. That makes sense. OK, but now that you have. Uh, just him just shaking and becoming something else and talking in different tones on AEW, it's kind of it's kind of like okay, this is nonsense. You know, where does the version one stuff come from? Why why is he doing that? Um, we we have no explanation to where Damascus came from. We have no idea why that's happening. Um, just not, none of this makes any sense. But furthermore, I say that he's showing that he's not a main event talent because I asked the question. What happened to his main event feud with Chris Jericho? That was who he was feuding with when he first came in. You know, the Vanguard one was chasing Jericho around. Jericho was trying to get Vanguard one and join the inner circle. None of that. All of that is gone now. They're not even interacting anymore. You know, for the last couple of weeks, Jeff Hardy and Matt, well, Jeff, not Jeff Hardy, but Matt Hardy and Chris Jericho have not even been in the same segment. They haven't talked about each other. They haven't done anything. That was supposed to be his introduction to AEW. That was supposed to be his main event feud. And it's gone. It's just over. So it's like, you know, Jericho is now hitting Orange Cassidy with a bag of oranges. That's the that's where Jericho is going. Jericho is, a, is try, I guess, trying to fight Mike Tyson. Um, Matt Hardy is not even anywhere near a main event or a top feud or anything important. He is you know, splitting characters and doing schizophrenic gimmicks while hanging out with private party. So if I ever needed any more evidence that there is a vast talent difference and a vast fan interest in difference um, when it comes to the Hardys, it's, it's pretty obvious. You know, Matt has to do things that are excessively over the top uh, character wise, while Jeff has to do things that are massively over the top physically because he has your attention as a as someone who, you know, just by the way he looks and the way he moves, but he doesn't always have anything to say. While Matt is now, you know, has a lot to say, but physically he can't really do it anymore. And he's now because he's mixing gimmicks with no direction, he's coming across as a guy who doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know what's going on. And that's not main event talent. You know, that is essentially community theater that a guy is mixing up playing Macbeth and then uh, uh, playing uh, Mickey from uh, from Colt's Natural Born Killers. It's like he's just flip-flopping. And, you know, Al Pacino does not play Scarface and Michael Corleone in the same movie, right? There's a separation between those two. That idea that we're going to end up playing everything at once, I don't. I have no idea where that comes from. You know, I don't know why that, why he's doing that. And it's making him uninteresting because it's looking like he has no direction and it's looking like he has no focus towards any one thing. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. I appreciate you listening and I'll talk to you later.